Um, and when you measure it on a VNA, you're going to look at the phase, which is a weird way of looking at it. But when you are on a VNA and you're looking at S11, which is return loss, um, what you might see is something like a dip mm -hmm. at some frequency. Remember, this is power, and this is frequency. And you give it some start frequency over here and some stop frequency over here. So I'll tell you what to set those two. But you'll see some little dip. And I'll go, Where's the, where is that resonant point at? Because maybe it's really sloppy, and maybe it only looks like, like that. It's really hard to tell where that dip is. If you look at S11, this is log, or, uh, log mag in black. But if you look at phase, what happens in phase is at the resonant point, there's an asymptote, no matter what. And that's real easy to see where it is, just nice, perfectly vertical line. So you'll see exactly where that is. So you're gonna set, you're gonna connect this up, you're gonna put it on your VNA, based on how many turns you're gonna have, ideally you'll tape these together, you know, and you'll keep them, you'll keep the coils nice and tight, because um, again, you don't want flux, flux leakage between these guys like that either. And then you use this variable cap. This is a variable cap that you, you put here and you tune it. So you do that for your transmitter and then you do it for your receiver. On the receiver though, this is a little big. Like you're gonna have to tune this thing and you've got you know a little coil this big. It might work just fine. Uh, but your lab kit has, I think, one of each. Uh, and they should be close enough to the same value that, that whatever you, I did the math already. Um, where if you wrap this, the diameter that I specify in the report, which I forget what it is, um, the number of turns that I say to do it in, and then you, you reduce how long these guys are. You don't want these big long straight trailers coming off if you can help it. Um, both capacitors should be able to tune to the value that you, should, you specify. If it doesn't, the only thing that's important, as long as you're okay with this, the only thing that's important is that they are the same frequency. Because remember, that's just the transmitter receiver you do it again for the receiver um, coil, uh, which are different sizes, because that's typical for wireless charging. Um, and you'll tune them both to the same frequency. That's really all that's important. But if we can help it, 6.78 is what they call an ISM band, industrial, scientific, and medicinal. Basically, it's kind of like a go wild. It's the, the toy bin in the Lego shop where it's like, just make a mess, we don't care, to a point. Um, we're also in a basement in the EMAG labs. There's not a lot of um, interference that gets out, that escapes. Uh, the irony that we're building an AM radio in this class is that we're in a basement that doesn't receive AM transmissions. But that's, so this is lab one. And if you guys have any questions, you guys will be the first people to do it. If you think the lab is stupid, tell me. If you think it's fun, obviously tell me. I love having my ego stroked. I hope it's fun. I try to build a class in a lab that I want to do, and I don't feel like it's a waste of my time. I'm not just drawing lasers and tracing pieces of acrylic and high school crap. Um, but I, I do want feedback because this is the first.